Hi, this is Phil Goldberg. I'm here with my co-conspirator, Swami Brahmananda, a.k.a. David Now. And uh, I'm in Los Angeles. Brahms is in Assisi, Italy, soaking up the vibes of St. Francis. And uh, welcome, Brahms. Good to see you. Pace e bene. Peace and blessings. <laughs> And namaste from Los Angeles, the Benares of America. <laughs> <laughs> Yogananda called LA the, the uh, Benares of America. And, uh, uh, we don't and even you know, have Dante much of a Assisi, that uh, the River Ganges flows under the city of Assisi. Yes. Well, you know, uh, since we we're going to talk about Yogananda, uh, he, there's both cities. Um, have a strong Yogananda presence, both historically and now in the present. Uh, he loved Assisi. He, he stopped there on his way to India in 1935 and uh, wrote about feeling the presence of St. Francis. He, quoted, he would quote St. Francis a lot. And uh, of course, he settled here in L.A. and, and uh, made it his home and headquarters. So. Here we and, are. And, and his disciple Kriyananda established their European headquarters right here in Assisi. Uh, I was there last week for their Sunday service for their satsang. And there are beautiful statues of St. Francis all throughout the gardens of, of the ashram there. Yeah. Well, you know, that's one of the things about the, uh, the, the yogis and gurus uh, who we're familiar with from India. They... They did not uh, make any distinctions between highly evolved souls of any tradition or religion or part of the world or religion. They, yeah. uh, they were kindred spirits, all of them. And these were two great souls who transcended any particular religion and saw the truth in all of them and honored yes. them. That's right. And uh, we are going to... Um, go to Kolkata, or Calcutta, as it was known in the days when Yogananda was um, a teenager and an adolescent and a teenager and a young man in Calcutta. Uh, you know, when I researched my book, The Life of Yogananda, uh, I got to know the cities uh, his family lived in when he was a child. And then uh, the significance of Calcutta, where they moved when he was uh, 13. And the uh, family home that they established there on Garpar Road, uh, we visited, as you'll recall, the last time uh, when we did the tour in 2016. And we went to some other sites in Calcutta and the surrounding uh, the nearby areas like Dakshineswar, where the uh, famous Kali temple that Ramakrishna made famous, and to the Yogananda ashram there, and to Sarampur, where his, he spent so many years with his guru. Uh, and we'll be doing the same this year in September when we uh, return to India with the next tour. And this time, uh, we'll go to some of those same places, but now, uh, I finished the book and have a lot more stories to tell <laughs> about uh, those places in India and Yogananda's life. And I'm sure we'll be welcome uh, just as we were in 2016 by the people in his family and his lineage. So it'll be a very special thing. I, I, a lot of the research I did for the book, uh, or as part of the research for the book was to dig into what Calcutta was like in the years he was growing up, and it was fascinating. You know, I, I, I learned so much about uh, life there in the early part of the 20th century. It reminded me of the stories you hear about Greenwich Village in New York uh, around that same time, a, a sort of uh, hotbed of uh, political activism it was the early days of the uh, Indian freedom movement, and it was centered in Calcutta. A lot of the 
the early revolutionaries were there, tons of gurus and swamis and ashrams, intellectual fervor, you know, it's a, it was a kind of a university area near where he lived, great scientists and intellectuals and thinkers and artists, you know, is right down the road from the Rabindranath Tagore uh, home, uh, which we also visited. So um, it'll be very interesting to go there and retrace some of his footsteps. In uh, doing your research for the book, what was uh, something that you discovered that was fascinating to you that you, you didn't know before researching the book? Well, one uh, pertinent to our, our tour is what I just mentioned about uh, India. And, and Indian history at that time was so much more complex. You know, they were under British rule. Uh, Yogananda's uh, college year spanned World War I. There were, you know, it was tremendous upheaval and uh, suspense. But uh, in general, one of the things I learned most was, uh, and I'm asked this question a lot, um, how much he struggled and the difficulties he faced here in America when, you know, he was doing his work. You know, he was here from 1920 until his death in 1952, except for one year in India uh, and Europe on the way. And um, he, he struggled a lot more. There were difficulties, challenges, you know, uh, business upheavals, money problems. Uh, rumors and allegations that made front page stories in the newspaper, uh, scurrilous accusations, uh, lawsuits, and, and as I said, financial struggles, especially, of course, during the Great Depression. But they never really stopped. And, and, and that was one of the great lessons of, of, and takeaways of the book. You know, some of us who are spiritual devotees of one sort or another, uh, we find our lives get a little easier and more joyful when we get on the spiritual path, but we, we like to fantasize that, that we won't have any more difficulties. <laughs> and and uh, we do, and we have to deal with them, and it comes as a shock sometimes, that because we all would rather just be in a peaceful ashram or a cabin somewhere. But here we are in the world with other human beings and money issues and all kinds of stuff. And uh, it was um, informative and instructional to, to read, you know, Yogananda's letters and hear some of his talks where, you know, he deals very candidly with having to, you know, deal with worldly problems and stuff that, uh, you know, other human beings face and it's good to know that highly evolved yogis, you know, at least the ones with a, a mission in the world like he had, have to deal with stuff and deal with it with dignity and grace and uh, maintain that connection to uh, all that is holy and sacred at the same time. Mm -hmm. I love hearing about his humanity. So often we hear about these great saints and their often mythologized and yes. you know, realizing the struggles they had to go through, just like we do. It gives us hope that, you know, as we struggle through the difficulties in our lives, we're not, we haven't fallen off the path, but these are the, op the opportunities for us to grow. And that's right. You see that with, with uh, Yogananda. You know, one of the things that we did last time that I really enjoyed was to go to the sacred places where so many of these events that we read about, like in the autobiography, Yogi and yeah, and yeah. your book, what places are we specifically going to go to this time um, that were sacred to Yogananda? Well, we visited his home and, and, and the, we all meditated in the meditation room he created as an adolescent. And we'll go to uh, the site where he started an ashram when he was 15. I mean, he was a real spiritual leader, even as a teenager, you know, when most teenage uh, sort of ringleaders are making mischief and organizing ball games, he was organizing satsangs. And um, the site where they had that is now uh, one of the uh, centers in the Yogananda lineage. We'll go there. These are all is in Kolkata. Is that in Kolkata? Or where is that? Is that yeah, in Kolkata? That's that's in Kolkata. We went there. It was that little uh, little center with uh, 
a meeting room and, and all that. Oh, yeah. And then, and then uh, we'll go by, at least, if not in, the place where he would uh, study with um, uh, one of his mentors, which was, it's a fascinating connection because we'll also go to Dakshineswar to the great Kali temple uh, associated with Sri Ramakrishna and uh, Vivekananda. And um, those were role models for Yogananda when he grew up. And he would go to the Dakshineswar temple and spend long hours in meditation and being in the presence of the, of the Kali uh, figure there. And he studied one of his mentors uh, who lived, uh, interestingly enough, it, who created a school in the very building where Yogananda's mother passed away when he was only 11. It was a big moment in his life. And then years later, he meets this mentor who happens to have taken over that building and made it a school. So the school became, I mean, that building became like the site of the worst trauma of his life and then some of the great spiritual uh, lessons and breakthroughs of his life. Because that mentor, who was named, uh, who he calls Master Mahasya, um, he went by the name of M. He was a direct disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, and he's the one who wrote the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. And, and, and then he would, he would take Yogananda to Dakshineswar, where Ramakrishna, you know, his presence still was felt, and they, they would meditate there. And some of the, their great experiences were there. So we'll go there, and, and of course, we'll cross the river and go to uh, Belarmat, the uh, site of where Vivekananda established the Ramakrishna mission. And, you know, we'll, we'll get a nice tour from the Swamis there. So. That's what we have in store, Brahms. Looking forward to it, Phil. A we lot a more. Practice. It'll be fun to uh, share that with you. Yeah, and we'll do practices as we uh, go to these sacred places. It's not. It's more than a historical tour. It's a a real spiritual pilgrimage, a yatra. Yes. The practicing in these sacred places that are charged with that spiritual energy. Yes, and so we'll, we'll uh, partake of some of what Yogananda might have felt nearly 100 years ago. Beautiful. Great. Talk to you next time. Namaste, Phil. Namaste.